President, uh, distinguished Secretary Gen General, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to thank the delegation of Uruguay for its initiative of drawing our attention to one of the most important topics in the area of protection of civilians in armed conflict, which is the protection of medical personnel and facilities. I would like to thank the Secretary General for his very informative briefing, as well as the other briefers. We are pleased that the focus presented by Mr. Guterres today on the issue under debate coincide with Ukraine's position. In particular, in terms of strengthening respect for international law, protection of civilians, including medical and humanitarian personnel, prevention of the forced displacement of refugees and internally displaced people. We share the deep concern at the situation in Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, and other places where civilians, especially women and children, continue to fall victim to armed conflicts. Mr. President, attacks on hospitals and medical facilities are a flagrant violation of international law. The severe international legal standards for a long time have provided absolute security to medical personnel and hospitals in conflict areas. However, in modern conflicts, hospitals and doctors are increasingly the targets and the victims of military operations. Not very long ago, we were all witness to the barbaric air attacks on medical installations in Aleppo, the methodical destruction, uh, destruction of the medical infrastructure of the city of Aleppo. When medical facilities come under fire or bombardment, it is a multidimensional tragedy. Not only do they sow death and destruction now, but also the civilian population is deprived of the possibility of obtaining medical care and uh, of saving lives as well in the future. This is the reason why last year Ukraine co-sponsored Security Council Resolution 2286. We are grateful to the delegations which promoted it, including, of course, the delegation of Uruguay for such a timely initiative. At this time, our shared objective is to develop effective mechanisms to supervise its implementation. In this vein, we would like to stress the following points which are important uh, to us. First of all, improving uh, the procedure for documenting cases of violence against uh, medical personnel and hospitals in armed conflicts, gathering and documenting the data on attacks on medical facilities and personnel is a key element in order to develop an effective preventive system. Secondly, We need to guarantee an independent, effective investigation of grave violations of international humanitarian law in terms of attacks on medical institutions and personnel in situations of armed conflict. In this vein, we believe it is appropriate uh, for there to be briefings or reports of the Security Council on uh, the situation in countries where medical care is under the threat of attack. These reports, to our mind, should include information on investigations of violations which mem member states commit. A similar argument in content was made by a delegation as well as many other speakers during the April meeting on the interconnection between human rights and conflict prevention. We see significant parallels between our current uh, topic of discussion and human rights as part of the area of competence of the Security Council of the United Nations. Thirdly, it is vital to ensure responsibility 
or rather accountability for acts of violence against um, medical personnel and hospitals. It is indispensable that those responsible for these war crimes be brought to justice. We share the opinion that when national accountability mechanisms are insufficient, member states must fully cooperate in their fight against impunity with existing international institutions in the area of criminal justice, including the International Criminal Court. We also believe that a key role can be played by the Secretary General through his good offices, including those in accordance with Article 99 of the Charter of the United Nations. Mr. President, in time of war, people begin to fear even everyday events and things which they take for granted in, under other circumstances. Today, in eastern Ukraine, getting to work, going to school, resting with one's family on Sunday afternoon, or working in one's own garden, very often means a choice between life and death. The aggressor country does not follow the standards of the Geneva Convention or the General Assembly resolutions, nor the Security Council standards on compliance with international humanitarian law. Medical services continue to come under attack from the occupied territories of the regions of Donetsk and Lugansk. Medical emergency brigades of Ukraine are subject to bombardments and are fired on, even though they have emergency symbols on their vehicles and even though the geographic emergency coordinates are publicly known. In the region of Lugansk, in the area controlled by the government, 8th health centers, a total of 11 buildings, were damaged. In the region of Donetsk, there were 29 health centers uh, that were damaged, and five of them were, no, uh, were demolished and have not been rebuilt because of the ongoing hostilities. In February, in the territory of the Advika Hospital, the, uh, Three BM-21 missiles fell, and the hospital continues suffering through the combat with a constant uh, damage to its electrical, water, and heating systems. Despite all of this, the hospital continues providing medical care. But the main building is so severely damaged uh, that it cannot be re uh, used or restored. The greater the, the vitally important um, infrastructure has left to, led to dozens of deaths. In Geneva, just a few days ago, the government of Ukraine is unable to provide any health services whatsoever to the millions of Ukrainian citizens remaining trapped under Russian occupation. In the occupied region of Lugansk Oblast, the situation has returned to the Dark Ages. With health policies copied from the Russian Federation, there are credible reports that antiretroviral and tuberculosis treatment is unavailable. The only source is delivery by smugglers. There is a dangerous lack of detailed data-derived insights into the child's health immunization, vaccine and polio status in the areas experiencing the most intensive conflict. As a party to the Geneva Convention relative to the protection of civilian persons in time of war of 1949 and its additional protocols, Ukraine committed to complying with these provisions and is disseminating knowledge of the norms and principles of international humanitarian law. Particular attention is paid to the protection of civilians, including medical and humanitarian personnel. In order to fulfill these obligations, in the armed forces of Ukraine, 
there was organized personnel and staff training on compliance with the norms and principles of international humanitarian law during planning and use of forces in armed conflicts. These activities are carried out in cooperation with the delegation of the International Committee of the Red Cross, Danish Refugee Council, Tarashevchenko National University, Red Cross Society of Ukraine, the Ukrainian Health and Human Rights Union, the International Charitable Foundation, Caritas Ukraine, and other international and national human rights organizations. With the support of these organizations in 2017, training activities for the study of international hum humanitarian law cover all categories of personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine. The measures also include personnel units returning from the immediate area of the entire terrorist operation, as well as those moving to the entire terrorist operation area. On the 26th April 2017, the government of Ukraine adopts Resolution 329 on the establishment of the Interagency Commission for the Implementation of International hum Humanitarian Law in, in Ukraine. Since 2014, the beginning of the Russian aggression against my country, we have been able to do much to protect civilians. However, much work remains ahead. We also count on the support and assistance of the international community in the implementation of the relevant tasks. And I thank you.